Hello. Hi, I'm Yelena. And I am David. Robson. Robson. <laughs> and this is our YouTube tutorial. On? Purvatanasana. Which translates to? Oh, east side stretch. That's right. Yeah. East side. That's east side? I don't know. <laughs> I've never been in a gang. Um, <laughs> All right. So uh, this is from Ashtanga's primary series. It comes after Pashimatanasana, West Side Stretch. But before we give you any more details, you have to pay by subscribing, uh, commenting, or just liking. <laughs> just liking. We'll settle <laughs> for that as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think, really, you, at the least you could do is subscribe. If you haven't already. Please. No pressure, though. We're just happy to have you here. But you should subscribe. Okay. East side stretch. So what's the, why the east side, west side thing? So Paschimottanasana west side stretch is a forward bend. You're bringing, you know, your, your nose towards your, your legs. So you're stretching the back line of the body. The back line is the west side. Why? Because when we practice, if it's possible, we always want to face east. So, you know, facing the sunrise. So the front line of our body is considered to be east, and the west side of the body, therefore, is considered to be west. And the west so, side of the body is considered west. The back side. I said the back side. And no, you said the west. We can review we'll the review video. This. Okay. Um, and so, therefore... Uh, this is called uh, east side stretch because the front line of the body is getting stretched when we do Purvottanasana. Uh -huh. Purvottanasana. Purvottanasana. <laughs> <laughs> I always do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, let's, can we do the vinyasa sequence first? Sure, yeah. Because many of you have written in. Uh, I've asked in the last few videos if anyone cares, and a lot of people care. About the vinyasa kill. I never said people don't care. All right. I just felt like maybe I was like overdoing it. I was being made to feel like that. But now I see that no. It's all no, in your head. You guys really want to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only Elena doesn't care. Uh, oh, you care? Oh, I, 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 like, I teach it for a living. Everybody cares. But, <laughs> everybody okay. cares. All right. So this is the exciting part. Now just get. A little bit of a better angle. <laughs> and ready? Yep. Okay. So from downward dog, we go supta, jump through, all on the inhale. And really it's, we say in the, in the lead class with our teacher, he says, exhale, bring the hands one foot back. But I think you could also inhale, jump through, bring your hands back, exhale there. And then... Ashtau, inhale, you lift up. In the inhale, you're coming into the state of the asana, so that would count as the first of the five breaths. Nasagrai drishti, gaze towards the nose. One, two, three, four, five. And then nama, exhale, last exhale of the five, come down. Dasha, inhale, cross your legs, pick up. Yekarasha, exhale, jump back. Dwarasha, inhale, upward dog. Prayodisha, exhale, downward dog. Okay. Well done, Yelena. Thank you. State of the asana, therefore, is ashtau. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that state of the asana just means the vinyasa that you hold. If you're interested in all this stuff, we actually have a course, um, uh, primary series intensive, where we go through all the vinyasa counts, yeah, as we well as the down. alignment yeah. and stuff for the primary series. Or we have this other course that's just about the count. Called Learn to Count. Called Learn to Count, <laughs> where I, we kind of go deep into it. Yeah, and it, it goes into a bunch of little details that would be just beyond yeah, the, the scope. scope of yeah. here. Um, but it's there. It's available. It's for Ashtanga nerds. Yes. Um, this is the most forgotten pose. <laughs> it's the one that everybody skips. <laughs> yeah, it's the one that, you know, you're having lunch. Uh, or you're working, and then you realize that it never made it into your practice that morning or that day. Uh, and it's so funny that it's like, 
yeah. for everyone. Yeah, one one is that I don't know. It's it's not. I don't think it's a very enjoyable pose. Like um, it's it's and it's not terrible, but it's not it's not great. But it it's not like the other poses too around. It's not it. a forward fold. Yeah, exactly. It, just, it 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 it's not. It just shows that, but it goes completely the other way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a pose that I have like a funny love or hate relationship. Like currently, I really enjoy it. But I would say it's like 50-50. And then sometimes I just like, it just, I don't like it at all. Like I feel like that's how you feel about me too. It's like 50-50. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. <laughs> um, Isn't that marriage? Yeah. I don't know. It's our marriage. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So uh, there's, there's actually a bunch of interesting, um, I think, biomechanical principles that play out here in this posture. Uh, that we, we can sort of talk about. There's good instances. So we can talk about the arms and the shoulders, and then we can also talk about the sort of the hips, the hips and the and legs. legs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, one thing is that now you could, you don't, this stuff that we're going to talk about in terms of the biomechanical stuff isn't necessarily explicitly part of tradition. So we, we don't get those kind of cues um, handed down to us um, in parampara, in the sort of the succession of teaching in our lineage. Um, our teacher would just say, bring your hands one foot back, right? And then he would say, inhale, lift up. Oh, and keep the legs, oh, and legs together. together. It's like That's very right. important that you don't let them kind of um, go their separate ways. And he even says one foot behind you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that's supposed to be an imperial foot, you know, 12 inches or one of your own feet or one of his feet. Um, but then he would just say lift up into the pose. And so what happens there a lot of the time is that we'll just revert kind of to the easiest way to do things, you know. Um, and we're not going to be told differently necessarily unless it goes against uh, what you know, what uh, Shiraji would say, like, with the legs, like Yelena just said, you know, the tendency, if you squeeze your bum to lift up here, it's going to extend, it's going to um, externally rotate your thighs and bring your legs away from each other. Do you want to come down? Oh, I was just demonstrating everything. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to sit there. I'm having a good moment with this pose. Oh, okay, so, yeah. so it's fine? Yeah, it's fine. So if you're squeezing your butt, do you know what I mean? Like clenching the, the cheeks together, then what happens is that the thighs roll out away from each other. And, and then it's going to be hard to keep your legs together, you're kind of working against yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, like the, the feet do that because we've mentioned in a bunch of other videos, glutes are external rotators. So when they squeeze, they do that to your legs. Yeah. So to counter it, you actually want to, we say, spin the legs in, but we don't mean spin in fully. Just come back to that neutral Paschimottanasana or Dandasana position yeah. and maintain that. But it is gonna, it's going to make it difficult to kind of get to the height through the, the hips that you have if you squeeze your glutes because your glutes are the best and the strongest hip extensors you have. Mm-hmm. But if you don't allow them to kind of fully fire you know if you don't allow them to kick in and then the legs to roll out you keep the legs spinning and the glutes can't activate as much so you're going to start to feel the other hip extensors kick in which are your hamstrings and you'll even maybe start to feel a little bit of cramping (laughs) in the hamstrings so this is how you can get your um your hamstrings to work to help you extend your hips i always just soften the backs of the knees slightly do you do that too no no okay and then I, and I point my feet, so I shorten the distance between my sit bones and my heels. Do you do that? I sometimes will do it like this. You'll oh. roll back first, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then it's how you lift up. So do you push up through the hips, or do you press down through the heels and pull yourself up into position? Are so you I, asking me? No, that's, that's oh, a, okay. I think. That's, you would say the same, right? Yes. Yeah. So you're using the strength of your legs to draw the hips forward, and that's what lifts you uh, into the air. All right? Really, if you have somebody around you um, that you're, you know, uh, comfortable with, they could come underneath and poke your bum to see if you're actually squeezing your bum or not. 
right? When you're doing it? Yeah. Or you can just focus, are your feet staying together? Then, okay. then you're probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> um, okay. And then the other um, principle that, is, that plays out here that we talk about in some of the other tutorials is the work of your shoulders. So your arms are coming into extension. You know, your shoulders are coming into extension here because your arms come behind your back. So uh, usually what's going to happen is that when we're lifting through the chest and pressing through the hands like that, we'll, once our arms are in extension, we'll externally rotate the arms and retract the scapula. So can you turn around? We'll show the scapula for a sec. So see, when Yelena um, externally rotates, so the upper arm rolls out as the arm is in extension, then the scapula squeeze together. So we're going to try not to do that. Um, we're instead, we're going to keep the humerus, the upper arm, in a little bit of internal rotation and then press through the hands and try to lift the chest evenly instead of retracting the scapula together. So it's an interesting feeling. Instead of the scapula, your shoulder blades coming towards each other, they're going to come uh, a little bit down and into your back. They will come towards each other a little bit too, but you're going to feel like a more even opening through the whole chest or even a little bit of resistance through the very top of the chest instead of that feeling kind of of just stretching through the fronts of your shoulders. I hate this. Yeah, that action. Yeah, and it, it uh, pulls so much here. Yeah. Like it, it, and then uh, the scapulas, when they squeeze together, it feels so crampy in the back, like it doesn't feel... Yeah, but it's harder not to do it in some ways too, I think. If you're used to externally rotating and pushing down. It, yeah, if you're used to it. But I think once you try this and you figure it out, then you really feel the evenness of the stretch, but also a lot of stability when you lift. Mm -hmm. Because you're not di dumping into that like hyperextension. Yeah. But your whole arm is very active and engaged and connected to the shoulder as well as the chest. Yeah. This is, this is the way that you can work on it, right? is you, you focus on keeping the index knuckle on the floor. So the, you know, this inside knuckle, keep it flat. Because if you externally rotate the arm, chances are that you're, you're lifting off that index knuckle. It's, it's kind of the hand is tenting away from the floor. And then if you keep your shoulders forward and that index knuckle down, you're not going to hyperextend your elbow. It's kind of, it's almost impossible. Right? But if, you let the arms roll out and that index not go lift and the shoulders pull back, then you're going to go into hyperextension. So it's a funny action of keeping the head of the shoulder forward and then it's like pulling yeah. as, you, as you press into the hands. I sometimes even over-exaggerate. So when I place my hands and also we want to make sure that our wrists are in line with the shoulder. So when we lift up, we have that like nice line of stability. Sometimes we see the hands are too close to the hips. So when you try to lift one, it feels heavier, but then as you come to the full expression of the pose, the shoulders are way past the wrist. So it kind of looks something like this and it becomes really difficult to find. Stay alone, yeah. yeah. But when I set up, I'll bring my hands and then I'll really exaggerate this spinning in so that I can find the index knuckle. And then here, I initiate the movement by pulling the shoulders back, which lifts the chest. And now I think about reaching through the toes as I tip the head back. So you feel like you're pulling away from your center to lift, mm -hmm. not what you were saying earlier, pushing through the hips to lift. Right, yeah. You're pulling on either yeah, end. Yeah, it's going this yeah. way. It's kind of like upward dog. Yeah, mm. and that's the that's what lifts your body. Don't think about just collapsing or pushing into mm -hmm. into the hips. And then the other the other thing that I always have to remind myself of when I get into that position is not to lift through the belly. Yeah, you know, I, I draw the belly like the the navel back towards the spine. Yeah, you know, so you don't kind of push up. Yeah. The other way I think about that is if I just keep on thinking about squeezing my legs together, so adducting, and I feel the engagement inside, and then that slight internal rotation, it kind of, that alone stops me from, from doing that, where, yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of... Uh, maybe I have a bigger belly. Maybe. <laughs> uh, 
This is also all the work of backbending. Because this is kind of like a beginning backbend, right? Anyway. See, so much, uh, so many um, ideas in that one posture. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Try it out. And sometimes it's really useful to go in both directions. So do what we say is wrong, not, not, not useful or helpful, especially in context of long term. And then try doing it this way. And if it's new, it's going to feel awkward. Awkward isn't necessarily you know, um, yeah. wrong. It's just awkward because it's a new movement. And then see, you know, do a few times and really try to scan your body and see how does it feel? Like, where do you feel it? What's different? Try it on. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, do let us know what you think. And remember, subscribe, like, and all that. Yes. Okay. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining. Ciao.